Hello, God bless you, my Patreon friends. <laughs> I'm able to record this during the day, so at least you can see me a little bit better. Um, so let's pray to the Holy Spirit and kind of see what he says. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and we will be recreated, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Amen. So the readings this week are very interesting, and I just want to kind of focus on a theme that's brought up from the gospel. Um, they try to trip Jesus up. So um, they bring him, you know, a, or they ask him, is it, you know, legal to pay taxes to Caesar? And they're trying to set him up. And Jesus in his divine wisdom says, um, you know, bring me a coin whose image is on it. And they say Caesar's. And he says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. And I think he's really speaking to the deepest part of their hearts in that. Because First of all, let's look at the intention. Why did they ask that of Jesus? They were trying to trip him up. So often in life, we come across people who are not honest. And it's interesting, growing up, I came from a family of business people, right? I have um, 10 brothers or brother-in-laws and a father that um, have spent their lives in finance and business. And um, one of them's a business lawyer and others are CFOs and CEOs. I actually have a sister-in-law that's a vice president of a very large company. And um, business has kind of been around growing up. You know, we talk about it a lot and they even wanted me to go into business. They thought I was business savvy. But um, it's interesting because the one thing my father is known for throughout our whole community and that he ground into all of my brothers, and thankfully my brother-in-laws have followed suit, is the idea of um, honesty and being ethical in business, right? And you see in these questions that they're asking Jesus, they're not being honest. They don't really want the answer about, um, you know, what to do with a few coins. They're trying to trip him up. Right? They're trying to see what they can get out of him. But my father growing up always taught us, you never cheat, you never steal, you never lie, and that you always help out the underdog. So for example, when he owned his woodworking business, he would walk through the factory and he would know the janitors by name and he would know how to work every machine in there. And no work was too great, you know, too low for him. He wasn't too good for anything. My brothers and my sisters too, but have a great work ethic that we got from my father in that way. And recently talking to my brother-in-law, who's a business lawyer about something, he said, he was explaining to me the difference between something being legal and something having good form, right? There are many things in our world that can be legal, but there's something that sometimes just isn't ethical or just doesn't have good form. There's, there's a lacking of that honesty. And we live in a world that's dog eats dog. And Jesus wants us to be generous and to take care of each other, right? The greatest business people are those that look out for the underdogs in their businesses. And we kind of see this, I'm going to be recent, um, you know, with Amy Barrett and her Supreme Court trial here to get her on. And there was a, a student of hers that came. And she testified she was blind that when she got to Notre Dame, Notre Dame didn't um, provide the material that they had promised they would to help her blind take classes. And she was falling behind. Amy Barrett could have been legal and said, that's not my problem, right? Or sent her to the bureaucracy to throw her around. But she's an example of someone who has sanctified that world, the legal world, the business world, with the humanity of woman's, womanly love and compassion and generosity. She said to this girl, that is no longer your problem. That is my problem. And within days, it was taken care of. You know, God asks us to go above and beyond the law, right? So let's go back to this question. They ask Jesus, 
you know, should we pay taxes? You know, they're being all legal and they're trying to catch him. And his answer is so wise. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Give to God what is God's. In that, he's telling us to, yes, you have to follow the law. And, you know, you have to pay your taxes and you have to, um, you know, do what's legal. But he's reminding them what is most important, that our hearts shouldn't be attached to money. Our hearts should be attached to the things of God. What did he say? That where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. So people who are trying to just gain, you know, for themselves in business or in the government or in law, sometimes what they're doing might stand up in a court. It's legal. But is it, does it have good form? Is it ethical? Is it being a holy businessman? Um, Blessed Silos, who was from the United States, was a priest that gave spiritual direction often to business people. And he always reminded them, you can look up more about his life, um, but he always reminded them about, you know, going that extra mile. You know, when uh, the soldiers asked John the Baptist what they needed to do to be saved, he didn't say leave government. He didn't tell the business people leave business, right? What he said is, if you're a soldier, then be a good soldier. Be just, be fair. If you're a tax collector, be honest, right? And I think that's something that I was just naturally raised with, but our world is lacking. That antenna of you know, being able to tell when something is ethical or right or kind, if it has that motivation of generosity behind it or not, right? You always want to take care of the people that you're in charge of. It's not, we don't ever want to use people or to assert in pride our um, ego on other people and be controlling. You know, the best businessmen that I know, and I don't know many politicians, but I know lawyers and I know business people. The best ones listen to the little people. They don't always assert their own opinion. They'll ask, you know, is there a better way to run this machine in the factory? The big CEO asks that. Why? Because he knows that he might have a lot of knowledge, but he doesn't have the day-to-day -day practical knowledge of what's on the ground. So he's very open and he listens to the little people, right? You know, sometimes, you know, you can have somebody full of book knowledge, but if their heart isn't trained in the ways of God, they don't apply it properly. And I'm not talking technically about legality. I'm just talking about ethics or like my brother-in-law says, form, right? To make sure it has good form. You know, where he is, um, is in his job, he's over many, 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 many people, um, always wants to make sure his people are taken care of, right? So during the coronavirus, they were off, but he was in the office. He was making sure that the people were all taken care of on all the levels. And that's the way my father always was. You know, whether he was in a bank or owning a business or he was the head CFO for all of these companies for a multimillionaire, he always took care of the little people. And he made sure that people got what was their just due for the amount of work that they get, they did, that they were taken care of. And more than anything, you know, I look at my brothers and my brother-in-laws and my dad and even some of his friends, right? Because you, you get to know their friends in that world. And what strikes me the most is their generosity and kindness that go a really far way. And when you treat people well, then they trust you and they work better for you. But it's always moving in that humility, right? So that's what I took from the gospel today. You've got people trying to trick Jesus in legality, but he calls us back to what does it mean to be a Christian, even in the business question, even in the legal question, even in the political question. Sure, give to Caesar what Caesar's. Pay your taxes, right? That's not a question, but give to God what is God's. And he's going to ask me when I die if I took care of the people under me. 
whether it be that I am, you know, in an official working mode, you know, over other people, or if it has to do with, you know, being a nanny and taking care of them. He always wants to see how we treat the people that he's entrusted to us. And more than making money, more than um, being correct legally, what he wants is to see, are we being humble? Are we being generous? Are we being kind? Are we being loving? Because at the end of life, you're not judged on how much money you make. And you're not judged on how popular you look or how many awesome connections you've groomed different people. What you're judged on is humility, generosity, love, patience, kindness, long-suffering, faith, hope. It, those are the treasures that mean something to God. So, you know, when I heard the readings this weekend, that's what really struck me. It's sure, give to Caesar what's Caesar's. Pay your taxes, right? Be sure that you do what you're supposed to do when it comes to legality or, you know, business trade. And you got to make a buck on something, that's fine. But make sure you don't do it by stomping on people. And make sure that you're always fair to everyone involved. Because... You know, just like in that other um, parable where the tenant, um, you know, was forgiven something really little and then he didn't forgive what was really big, right? And that angered the man that was in charge. We have to make sure that we're generous to each other because that's really little. Because God has already been generous to us, which was big. I think I misspoke myself. He was forgiven something big and wouldn't forgive something little, right? So we have to remember how good God has been to us, how he's blessed us, whether it be like me and my ministry or it be you and your business or you and your family, in your parish, whatever it is, God has blessed you. And make sure that you are generous and humble um, and giving to God what is his. And oftentimes we do it by giving to each other, right? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. Please keep praying for me and for all of this work, um, especially the books right now, just as we're working on getting them um, you know, out there more in English is so important. And then all these different translations that all the different, you know, bumps along the road get evened out through the Holy Spirit. And um, that it truly bears fruit in many souls for God. Thank you.